She's a black-handed spider monkey. So where the name Spunk? That was the name that her owner gave her, and it's Spunky, spelled S-P-O-N-K-E-Y, so she's Spunky Monkey. Plus she is full of life and Spunk. In order to interact with her properly, I have to at least, oh, she likes you, yeah. I have to at least be able to read her facial expressions to see the mood that she's in. I saw in the newspaper one day an ad, somebody advertising a monkey for sale. I realized right away that she would be put to sleep, put down, euthanized humanely, if NEPA or the Vet Services Division got to her before I did. I called my vet, I asked him to intervene with veterinary services and I called NEPA. And then we brought her here to keep her in isolation or quarantine, following the quarantine procedures of the veterinary services division, which was A, that I alone would look after her. That this jacket that you see me having on here now was worn in here only and then bagged and taken home and cleaned, so I have about six of them that I use hand sanitizer and bleach and gloves and everything so that when I came out of the cage when she was in quarantine, I had a pan of bleach that I stepped through. All of her feces and things were disposed of and not just thrown ad hoc all over the place. And um, we did that until we had her tested. They drew blood, they sent it away and tested her for the various diseases that monkeys can carry. We had to go through all of that in order for her to live. Had she come back positive with any of the diseases, they would then have come and humanely euthanized her. The way they're captured in the wild is very devastating for the monkey. First of all, as a young monkey, you stay with your mother for approximately a year. For the first year, for the first seven to eight months, you're hanging on to your mother and you go from tree to tree with the troop. Your ants will come up and they will groom you. You will have your little tumbling playtime with the other young monkeys in the troop. And in order to capture these monkeys, what the hunters do is they shoot the mother out of the tree. The, ba the mother then falls, so if they shoot five monkeys for the day, chances are they'll get two babies because in the fall and the baby may be injured and they then take them and they are stuck in PVC pipes in order for them to pass through. If the boat is stopped by the Coast Guard or whatever, you're really a fishing boat and um, you might have some PVC pipes lying down. If customs don't get up and look, there's a baby monkey stuck in there. When I first met her, how, and even in the mornings when I come to get her, how I behave with her is to give her my back and be subservient. Never to, to come up and just decide, well, I'm coming into the cage now. She's used to me now and she might not take it as badly as before, but they like to actually come and you have a little greeting and a little meeting. She touched me a while ago with her hand to say that she wanted attention. And because I didn't give it to her, she has picked up the brush. That is telling me that what she really wants me to do is give her what would be some kind of mutual grooming. And this just makes, it releases like endorphins. So it pretty much makes her feel relaxed because this is what monkeys do to each other in a troop. Monkeys are prone, similar to humans, to depression. And so if she's just left alone in here, no matter how much toys or how many interactive things are in here, she still craves some kind of contact. You see, um, I'm to brush, yes. Don't stop and chat, brush. <laughs> uh, so they do crave some type of human contact, but unless you really know what you're doing, it isn't advised to do this too often, simply because she will, in a, at a moment's notice, turn violent. There are days when she simply is not in the mood for anybody to come in, because in order to come in, I have to catch her. And in order to catch her, I take her, what have you done with the bear? I take this toy, her little bear, and I will slip my hand through the door and she holds the bear. And then while she's playing with the bear, you're very concerned, I'm not giving away the bear. While she's playing with the bear, I'll take my finger and catch her hand 
and then I'll be able to control her and come in and put on the leash. Here. I didn't mean to take away the bear. I was just showing them how I catch you most mornings when you're in the mood. That type of dependency that you're seeing and cuddling with the bear is what would happen in a troop of monkeys. This is part of what they call animal enrichment, where aside from giving her her two bowls of food, which will go in later, I also give her little toys with her treats stuck inside of them so that she has to have time to go to various areas to look for special treats. What I do for her here is she gets one large meal for the day and it is a variety of the recommended diet for them in captivity. Um, a lot of people will say, well, oh my God, in the wild are there yogurt stores for monkeys? No, she gets yogurt here because the yogurt provides a balance of bacteria, yogurt being made from a bacterial culture that she would regularly be getting in the wild. Banana and papa have an amount of potassium that is necessary for them because they're very active and the salt in the potassium is used with muscle development and keeping your muscles free. So it's expensive as well as, as high maintenance in care. It's incredibly expensive. Spunky's weekly food bill alone is approximately $4,000. The fan is to keep her cool because an important thing with animals is that they can move. When you have them in a cage, they're stuck there. And this cage gets particularly hot at particular times of the day. In the wild, she would run higher into the treetops during the summer months where she's from in Nicaragua. She wouldn't be near the beach area. She would go up into the hills where it's cooler. So because part of environmental enrichment for animals in captivity is to maintain a balance in the environment, I did this with her in particular because I have always wanted... I work in education as well as animal behavior. The two things go hand in hand when you work with zoos and children and all the rest of it. Um, because I had particularly wanted her to use her to highlight the reasons why they don't make good pets and to also highlight the illegal pet trade that is going on here and also in the hopes of eventually um, motivating Veterinary Services Division and NEPA to start a sanctuary out here for these animals that are coming in.